Hey, what's up everyone, Bubba Kings here, and today we're going to have a quick first look at Paladin Strike. So, if you don't know what Paladin Strike is, it's a mobile game. Currently in closed alpha, I was lucky enough to get invited to it, and I thought I would just give my opinions and what I think of the game so far. Um, so, obviously the game's in alpha, so a lot of the stuff we're going to talk about here will eventually be changed, but I thought uh, we could still give some feedback in. For some of you that aren't in alpha at the moment, you can see what the game's currently like at the moment, and you can sort of give your own feedback just based off what you see, and for people that are in it at the moment, it would be nice to hear what you think of the game as well at the moment. Uh, I should also say that I don't really play too many phone games, especially not phone games in this genre, so a lot of my feedback is going to be coming from the viewpoint of someone new to the game and new to the genre, so keep that in mind uh, with what I say. Okay, let's get into this. So one of the biggest things I like about Paladin Strike is how it stays true to the Paladins universe. So if you played Paladins on PC, you pretty much know every character that's going to be in this game, or their abilities, or the legendary cards they have, their voice lines, the music of the game. It stays pretty true to uh, the Paladins universe that has been established on the PC version. So, for example, you have, like, Eevee. She has all the skills you think she would have. She has a blink, she has saw, she has ice block. Um, she has the same type of weapon. All that good stuff. Same ultimate as well. Uh, but they also have the same legendary. So you also have, like, Reprieve, which is the ice block legendary on the PC version. Does the exact same thing on Paladin Strike. It gives you healing while you're in ice block. Uh, there are some slight differences with how the character's kits work together. For example... Um, Eevee in this game, she can blink during ice block and she can also, uh, when the ice block shatters, it does like this shatter AOE effect damage around it. So you can sort of activate ice block, blink on top of an enemy, your ice block ends, it will do a bit of damage and you can use it to like finish people off if they're low or just deal good AOE damage. You can use it to, you know, ice block, blink in, deal AOE damage and soar out because your soar is crazy quick in this. Um, but yeah, you can blink over walls, really, really cool stuff. So, it, it's sort of similar, like the abilities are similar, but there's still those slight differences, obviously, because it's not the exact same type of game. Yeah, as I said before, the legendary system, pretty close, most of the legendaries are the same. The ones that I've seen, mostly, that come to my head are like the Cassie's dodge roll legendary. What, your first shot after dodge roll and deals extra damage, that's in the game. Eevee's one. And there's a couple of other out there for, like, Buck, for example. Buck has a couple of similar ones, I think. And, yeah. So, if you play Paladin on PC, you you can just jump straight into this game and have a good idea of what each character uh, can do and what their legendary cards are going to be like. Which is really nice, because it makes it super easy to transition or, you know, play both of the games, since you already know what half the characters are going to do. There's no, like, real learning curve, because you already know what they do. Which, yeah, as I say, makes it easy to just jump in and play. Okay, so let's talk about how the actual game plays now. So, uh, it's pretty similar to the PC version, 5vs5. There's PvE, PvP modes, all that good stuff. Uh, this one actually has three game modes. So, the first one, it's quite a long one, it's called Summon. And basically, there's three capture points, A, B, and C. And they're up all the time, pretty much. And you can capture any free. Uh, they slowly build up these points for your team. First team to get to 100% spawns this creature in the middle. The creature starts running down towards the enemy base, depending on who won the capture point section, and tries to destroy the enemy structure. And the first team to lose their structure loses, and the other team wins. So, uh, this mode I find is... Pretty good if you have a character with a lot of mobility, like Eevee or someone that can just run around a lot. Because you can blink over the walls, which make it really easy to get to the capture points. And since you don't have to stay onto them, you can just blink on and then go try and capture another one. And the enemy team has to spend time running all the way around the wall if they don't have like an Eevee or someone with mobility like that uh, to recapture the point. I found this mode, there wasn't too much actual fighting as a big team, it was a lot of small skirmishes it felt like. And this was one of the longer game modes out of the three. 
This one, I think the first couple I played were really close and it ended up going around to 20 minutes, which for me, it seems a bit long for a phone game, like a game of like Paladins or a League uh, or League of Legends, you know, 20 minutes seems pretty normal, but I feel like for a phone game, uh, 20 minutes might be a bit much. But as I said, these games were quite close, so I assume they're usually, you know, a quick round of this could be anywhere between like 10 to 15 minutes and the real close ones will end up being like 15 to 20. So yeah, that's the summoner round, um, summoner game mode, sorry. And then they also have another mode, which if you play Paladins on PC, you'll have a really good idea of how this mode works. So it's pretty much the exact same, uh, siege mode that we have on PC. I don't think they call it siege in this, I forgot what they call it exactly. Oh, it actually is called siege, so it's the exact same name as, uh, the one on PC, so if you play Siege on PC, you'll know exactly how this mode works. Basically, there's one capture point. Both teams of five try and capture the point. The, key, um, the team that does capture the point gains one point, and then it spawns a payload for that team, which they have to try and push into the enemy base, and that can uh, get them another point. So the only real difference between this Siege mode and the one on PC is that in this, you only have to get two points instead of getting uh, four, like the PC version. This makes it pretty quick, because you can easily just win in one round. You can just go straight from capturing the capture point to pushing the payload in, and it can make a real quick game. So, I this sort of between um, the the game time is going to be between the summers mode um, and the next mode that's going to come up next. So it's around ten to fifteen minutes most games. Like the longest one won't be going over fifteen minutes. I feel like most of these were much quicker than summons. So I assume. Most of them are going to be uh, less than summer, summers in game time. Uh, so obviously Siege is pretty good. There's a lot more team play in it than the summons mode because there's only one capture point so everyone's fighting on the one spot. Which sort of means you need a actual team comp unlike summons. So you need you know, you know need your Yings, your Grox and stuff so you can actually heal. And you need your frontline and your DPS to uh, actually you know round off your comp. You can't just play a really mobile character on every, like all five people can't play mobile characters and just try and capture the points uh, and force the enemy to run around trying to chase you. This one you actually have to make a team comp and try and fight 5v5 a bit. So it's a, it's a bit of a different playstyle which is kind of nice that so you have these two options. Uh, the last game mode is deathmatch, really simple, 5v5, so it's a team deathmatch and first to kill 30 enemies wins. Really simple, really quick game mode. This is definitely the quickest out of all the modes. Most of my games have been only going to like five minutes with this. So if you only have like, if you're on a shitter or something and you only have time to play like one game, this is definitely the game mode for you. You can get in there quick, done, you know, don't have to waste time doing too much stuff. Yeah, it's really, really nice having one of these really short modes. Because I feel like most phone games, you want to play them when you have like a really small break. Like, you know, you have like a small lunchtime break or you have some downtime between like classes at uni or something like that. You just want to get in that quick game of Paladin Strike. This definitely seems like the go-to mode. And obviously, you don't have to rely on the team too much. You can, charge, you can sort of just go and do your thing and try and fight people, kill people. There's, yeah, it sort of seems like the fun mode, like where you just get to relax, you can just go fight people, you don't have to worry about some sort of objective to stand on or anything like that. Just go in there, kill some people, and maybe you'll win. Uh, so yeah, they're the free game modes. It's really nice that they have sort of this balance between how long each one will take. So if you have a lot of time, you can jump into summons, play that long uh, match. If you don't have too much time, you can just jump into death match. So it's really nice that they have that balance there. Okay, so let's get into how it runs at the moment. So obviously the game's in alpha, it's not completely optimized at the moment. And it was pretty obvious when I was playing on my Samsung S5. Uh, there was lots of frame drops and yeah, a lot of stuttering, a lot of stuff like that. Hopefully this will be improved in the future, but obviously S5 isn't the newest line of the phone, um, newest generation of phones, so it's sort of expected for it not to run amazingly, but I was hoping that there would be a bit less uh, FPS drops and FPS issues when I was playing. But I did get the opportunity to play on a newer phone. I got to play on the Samsung S7, and it ran really well on that. I experienced like very little um, frames issues, even when I was trying to record it. So it was really, really good on the S7. 
which is quite surprising. I thought for a game in alpha that they, I would experience even a little bit of FPS issues on the newer devices, but it ran really smooth on there, which was really nice. It actually feels so much better when you're running it like a, uh, when the frames aren't dropping and stuff, because it makes the control and everything so much smoother and it just feels a lot better. So if you're running on a pretty old device, you might have some issues when you get into the alpha, but I assume a lot of this will get fixed in the future. So hopefully it's not too much of an issue. And yeah, but they'll probably add like some graphics options and stuff like that in the future for people with not as new phones. Uh, one of the big issues I actually have with the game is not the music of the game, because the music actually is taken from the PC version of Paladins, which is really nice. Uh, you sort of get like a bit of nostalgia, but the sound during the game when you're playing, it sounds like there's too much noise just going on. Like, I'll play a clip here just to give you a bit of an example of what it sounds like when you're playing, but it just sounds like there's too much noise going on for noise sake. I wasn't playing with headphones on, so maybe it's an, that's an issue, because maybe it's a bit better when you have like a bit of surround sound with uh, headphones instead of just using the phone speakers. But it just felt like there's just noise going on constantly. And it made it really hard to focus to listen to the Ottoman calls out or the team chat when they use their voice commands or just listening to if someone's attacking you or something like that. It just sounds like there's constant shooting and stuff going on and you can't really... It doesn't really help you at all. It just sounds like noise constantly going off in the background. And it can get a bit a bit annoying uh, listening to that for like a good 20 minutes in modes like summon. So there are some sound options. Obviously you can balance the sound, turn the you know sound effects down a bit, leave the music up if you want. But the problem is, as I said before, you want to be able to listen to these ultimate callouts. And not even that, just listening to if someone's shooting at you or something like that. But you, it's kind of hard to work out what's going on since there's just too much audio going off at the same time. So if Eevee shoots her old off, you might not... Actually, Eevee's one of the easier ones to hear her old because it's so high-pitched. But some of the other alts are a bit, you know, they sort of get mixed in with the deep sounds of the guns and stuff going off. And it can be a bit harder to uh, hear what uh, is going on with that since, yeah, you can't really hear their alts going off or your team trying to communicate with you and stuff like that. So I wish there was a bit less sound, or maybe drown out the sound of people that are a bit further away from your actual character or something like that. Because, yeah, even if they're on like the top right far corner of the screen, they still play like they're right in your face, which is a bit annoying. Uh, another issue I have with the game is... Well, it's, it's, maybe it's because I haven't played these type of games too much, but I feel like the movement and all that stuff works great. Skill shotting works amazing but when I'm trying to auto attack uh, it works fine but as soon as I have to reload I have to let go of the button and press it down again even once I finish reloading I wish I could just hold down the button and then you know it shoots then my character reloads and then it just starts shooting again instead of having to shoot and then reload lift up my thumb and then push it back down again it feels annoying but you get used to it like after playing one or two rounds I just got used to lifting up my thumb and pushing back down so it's sort of just a uh, you know to make it a bit easier to use I can just keep my thumb down there and just move it in the direction I want to shoot that's something I would like to see um what else is there so another issue I had was I experienced small rubber banding when playing on Wi-Fi and mobile data uh, I'm not sure if this is of course just because I'm in Australia and we don't have amazing internet here so it might be different for you guys in like America or other countries but I experienced some small rubber banding when my character you know would move around slightly when it was trying to catch up with the servers and stuff like that. I had around 66 ping when I was playing in Australia so that's not too bad I was actually surprised that the ping wasn't too bad. I just think there's small connection drops where like some packets don't get through or something like that. And that's causing some of this small rubber banding go. Hopefully this gets fixed uh, in the future when they just, you know, get some better. When they just optimize everything and make it a bit better. And find ways to uh, compensate for any, like, packet drops or anything like that. So, yeah. But, as I said, this is from Australia. So, people in America will probably have a different um, experience with this. On that point, it's actually um, kind of interesting. So I used mobile data to play when I wasn't at home. 
And I was actually surprised that it didn't use too much data. So if you play like games like Hearthstone and stuff, you probably notice that the games don't use too much data. And this is important. I don't know about America, but I know in Australia we still have like data caps on phone plans and stuff. So it's kind of important to know how much data these end up using like per game. So for around an hour of game time, I've only used four megabytes, which I think is really, really good for how long I played. And it also didn't use too much battery. So if you've played like Hearthstone on your phone before, you know that completely destroys your battery. Like you just run out of battery so quick playing Hearthstone on your phone that it's absolutely insane. Wait, this wasn't too bad. Uh, it definitely can be improved. It was, I think it was around 30% I lost over an hour and a half. And that's on my S5, by the way. So that's not too bad. But um, yeah, it, it definitely can be improved. But it's definitely better than where Halfson is at the moment. So that's always a plus. So yeah, overall, I really like the game. I always wanted a game to play on my phone when I'm not really doing anything. Usually I play Hearthstone, but as I said before, it completely <laughs> destroys your battery. So if I'm not near a charging point and I want to play something that doesn't completely drain my battery, um, now I got this option, which is really nice. And it's, yeah, it's just really nice. It seems like a solid game, even this early on in the alpha, which gives me a lot of hope and uh, it looks really promising for the game's future if it's already this good right out in alpha. So as I said before, if you are already in the alpha, it would be nice to hear what you guys think of the game so far. Uh, obviously, since I'm very new to the game, it would be nice to hear your opinions if you've been in like playing these type of games for a long time, how it compares to other games in the genre and stuff like that. And yeah, I think it'll be really interesting to have a discussion about this. So yeah, if you have played games like this before, just leave a comment. Tell me what it's like compared to those type of games. Because I'm actually really interested to hear what you guys have to say. So if you guys want to see more of Paladin Strike, I have a bit recorded um, from this game that I'm probably showing right now. So I'll probably just leave this game to finish. And if you guys want to see more Paladin Strike, just leave a comment below and I will post some more Paladin Strike in the future. So thank you for watching the video and I'll see you guys next time.